Thank you, Greg. You know, I just thought when I looked outside, this might be the only time I'll give a talk in the middle of a miniature golf course. I think it's, it's great. You know, you get the mountains and you get putting green. It's great. Uh, yeah, thanks. This is, uh, I'm finally getting around to presenting some work I did for my master's uh, work last year. Uh, there's actually going to be, I think, four talks, three talks, I guess, uh, or presentations, two posters and this, um, looking at uh, kelp extract biostimulants in the organica orchards that Lorraine referenced this morning uh, in the OREI session. So this is kind of a sub-project of the greater uh, organica project. Just to recap, this was done in orchard one in the newly planted orchards, uh, you know, fairly uniform trees, uh, planted in 2006. Um, and it, the, the, the trial was overlaid on top of the other five varieties that we were planting. So the real crux of the Organica project is really a cultivar trial. Uh, and this was a split plot design on top of that. The trees weren't growing very well in 2006 through 2008. And so we were trying to think about some ways we might be able to look at, at trying to improve their growth and performance. Uh, and so we decided this is, this is one thing we looked at. So we looked at a few different materials. Um, there's a long history, and we just had a few talks on, on what I'm going to call ANEs, Astrophyllum nodosum extracts or kelp extract materials, uh, in the other session, and I don't know how much there was back and forth between here. Um, but kelp extracts have been used for a long time in agricultural applications. Um, there's been a fair amount of research done, not a lot of published research on apples, but a few, a few papers here and there. Um, and there's been a few effects here and there, but a little bit inconsistent. Um, and at least when I was doing my lit search maybe three years ago, um, I couldn't find a lot of, if, if any, uh, integrated organic trials. Um, and I couldn't find much uh, that was looking at, at the non-target effects, um, aside from a few mite studies uh, from the 90s and the, and the 60s. Uh, the AME materials are not really nutrients. If you actually measure out the nutrient content of how much you're putting on there, it's very minimal. Uh, what, what you're looking at really is more of a cytokine or, or a hormone-based activity uh, that these materials have. So I selected two materials. It's more of a broad study than a deep study. Um, you know, didn't try a lot of uh, application rates or lots of different materials. We selected two materials because they are from manufacturers in the northeastern U.S. or eastern Canada um, and tried them on their on the manufacturers recommended uh, rates. Um, they were both labeled, at least at the time that I started the, the experiment, one I don't believe is anymore, uh, were US EPA labeled as plant growth regulators uh, for some kind of general, general needs of you know, improving plant growth, yield, uh, uh, and, and resistance to pests, although I don't know if that was part of the specific label. Uh, so the trial again was a, a split plot design where I had my five cultivars, the two different treatments and a non-treated control. Each material was applied at the recommended rate from the manufacturer. They were applied on the, applied on the same days as each other, um, with sprayed to drip with a handgun, um, and seven times each season. So they, they got quite a bit of this stuff uh, on, on each tree throughout the years. Now, the entire orchard, as also part of the Organica project, received all the other general care and maintenance that we put onto it. So the whole <coughs> orchard received you know, a, an organic uh, fungicide program, organic insecticide program. Um, one thing we did not do in this orchard, we did uh, apply lime sulfur at about the time you would use it for thinning, although in Vermont we can't legally say we used it for thinning. Um, but we did use liquid lime sulfur at that time, and we wanted to see the effect that these materials might have on thinning uh, by, using that, uh, by using those products. So we did not do any hand thing in these orchards. Uh, like I say, it's broad and not deep, so we collected a lot of data uh, as part of the, of the project, and it actually goes beyond this. This is just horticultural and fruit quality data. Um, there was also a lot of foliar uh, pest incidence data and uh, fruit uh, pest incidence data, and that's what's uh, on the posters in the other room. We can talk about that in a couple hours. Um, all the, everything was subjected to the same analysis, a 2A ANOVA, um, error rate of, of 0.05, and uh, looking at uh, what I'm presenting is not cultivar differences, that's, that's beyond this or, or side to this, but uh, differences we're, uh, that we can attribute to ascophyllum nodosum extracts or interactions if they only affected certain cultivars. Um, so to cut to the chase, the majority of the data that we collected didn't show any effects from the treatment, good, bad, or worse. Um, generally tree growth, uh, bloom characteristics, there weren't any, any uh, uh, 
statistically significant effects. On tree growth, in the first year of the study, there was on ginger gold only, um, there was an effect that we could read at a, at a 0.01 error level, um, where these, the trees were a little bit taller, um, 2.1 meters versus uh, on the stimplex treated trees, versus 1.8 meters on the ginger gold, although ginger gold is a very whippy, kind of leggy, uh, uh, willowy variety, and we had a lot of bending, and I wonder how much of this actually had to do with, with fruit load. Uh, bending the tops of the trees down on certain trees that had more fruit, and we'll touch on that in a second. Um, so I, I'm not walking away from this saying, well, this is going to make your ginger golds, you know, bigger trees, um, because it also made the Macauans skinnier trees. Uh, and, uh, and it was, you know, statistically significant at 0.01, so it, you know, it was, it was there. Um, but as far as management uh, in the orchard, I, I wouldn't recommend it. It didn't, it didn't hold up against all the varieties. Uh, but that is something we did see as far as tree growth. Um, as far as blossom characteristics, the only thing that we did see was a difference only on Zestar, only in 2010, uh, with the number of blossoms uh, divided by the trunk cross-sectional area of the tree, kind of, kind of a yield efficiency, sort of a blossom efficiency uh, reading, where the Stimplex had uh, fewer blossoms in the seed crop 16, and, but neither was, was different from the non-treated control. Um, so again, I can't recommend either one or suggest either one's worse than, than just not doing anything for blossom retention. Um, this was an interesting slide. Uh, foliar nutrient analysis, we, we did a lot of uh, replicated uh, foliar samples uh, to look at assimilated mineral nutrients. And for the most part, uh, there wasn't any effect from, from any of the materials. Um, I can say that, that out of this sea crop, that really doesn't look very good because uh, if anything, it actually lowered the, the assimilated nutrient level for, for uh, a half dozen or six or seven different nutrients over the years. Um, so that really wasn't something we were looking at. Stimplex, we didn't see it that so much um, and it di generally didn't differ statistically from the non-treated control, but it also didn't boost them. But I should point out that in no case where there was a difference in uh, foliar nutrient levels, did it change it from a adequate to a, to a deficient or adequate to excessive levels? Nothing kind of shifted categories there. Um, so it was pretty neutral as, as far as that goes. Um, for fruit yields, um, again, the majority of data didn't show any effects from, from the treatments. Um, and for yield efficiency, and, and we measured yield many different ways, the number of fruit on the tree harvested on the tree, the kilograms of fruit harvested on the tree, the, the amount of pre-harvest drop and the total. And out of all of these, there's about half dozen different permutations of that. Uh, yield efficiency was the only one that separated out as far as yield characteristics. Um, and in that, uh, in that scenario, Stimplex had lower yield efficiency than the non-treated control and the uh, seed crop 16 treatments. Um, but not, I, I don't know that I would say there was an economic difference, um, but it did, it did show up in the stats. Um, as far as fruit weight, individual fruit weight, we did see a difference where um, in 2010, the Stimplex fruit on ginger gold only um, were smaller than the non-treated control, but neither differed from, from the seed crop 16 treatment. Uh, and, and I don't know how to, how to attribute that. There might've been, uh, some, there were some more fruit that year, so each one was a little bit smaller. But again, we, we consider the 140 gram, I separated the, when I graded the fruit out, and that's a separate economics talk, um, 140 gram was kind of the cutoff as to whether or not it was going to be a, a saleable uh, fruit as opposed to utility. And uh, everything was, as far as the ginger golds anyway, uh, fit in there. Uh, it, again, it didn't, it didn't shift the economics at all. There was, and I was... I, I, I debated even including this because it, it almost felt like I was cherry picking the data. Um, we did measure a non-statistically -signi non significant difference in both years for ginger gold where Stimplex did increase the yield, but it was only on ginger gold um, and it actually cut the yield in half. I think it was on Zestar. So, I, I mean, when I was looking through the data and, and, and my uh, Lorraine Burkett, who was my, my primary major professor, said, well, you know, you, you've chosen to use statistics to, to, to test these materials and you kind of have to stick to what's statistically significant. And I said, but there's double the yield, even though this, the stats didn't pull it out. Um, but again, if you look further down the data, there was about half the yield on another, on another variety. But I did think it was interesting. And I do think under different conditions and, and certainly under potentially different climatic conditions 
And maybe um, when we talk, if we go to, to the posters later, you can see we had some real problems with, uh, with mites in this orchard. And I think maybe if we had trees that were a little less stressed, we might see more effect. Is that two including the questions? Is that two of my 10? She started at 12. Okay, <laughs> good. I think I'm almost done anyway. Um, but so the bottom line is that we didn't really see any significant uh, increase in the crop yield over two seasons. Uh, looking at the fruit assessment, uh, we didn't see any differences in, in starch index, uh, sugars, you know, fruit shape, fruit firmness, anything like that. Um, we didn't see any difference in lenticel spotting or russeting, uh, general russeting. Um, what we did see a difference on was sunburn, and this was actually quite significant. Um, you can see the, the reduction in sunburn in 2010 from about 15% of the fruit uh, for both AME materials. Uh, you know, a tenfold or more reduction. Uh, that was pretty significant, and I can see how that would be significant in a, uh, in a, in a hotter climate. Um, I'm going to just keep moving a little bit. I'll move past this. Um, a similar effect we saw on the other climatic end of, of frost rings. This is a problem that, that we have when we have frost during bloom, and it causes a russeting around the surface of the fruit. Uh, both materials reduced, whether it was statistically significant or just numerically significant, uh, frost rings on the one cultivar that had them real bad. Um, and this, this was, was pretty important, and I can see how these materials you know, seem to lend themselves to providing some kind of resiliency to the cells. Um, so I think that this does kind of sheds light on maybe it would make some sense to look at these materials, maybe for targeted applications, almost like a, a proline replacement for Golden Delicious or something like that, um, you know, for fruit finish. Uh, I just hit on that. So I just want to thank everybody else in the project. Um, you'll see this slide a few times throughout the, the season or throughout the days. And if there's any questions, I have zero minutes, but I can take one question. Do you have questions? Okay. Good. Thank Thanks, you. Gary.